health nuts welcome back to my channel it is that time of the month where we do a meal prep video and you guys voted in the last meal prep video that you wanted to see a back to school edition so that is exactly what we're doing today I've got a ton of delicious recipes to help keep you going all back to school long and I feel like I'm just getting into the back to school spirit because my nephew is going to school for the first time next month Chloe is going back to school and a part of me just wishes that I was going back to school. I mean, besides like all the studying and the exams, back to school, college was a lot of fun and I kind of miss it and sometimes I want to go back. Now before we hop in, I just wanted to remind you guys to please subscribe to my channel. Hit that red subscribe button down below. I post three times a week on my channel, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and I have a ton of back to school content coming up in the next couple of weeks. Oh, and if you guys are going to be around in the GTA region on Wednesday, August the 30th at 7 p.m., I'm going to be doing my very first meetup. I am so excited about this meetup. I've partnered with my friends over at Toronto Adventures and Be Good, and we're just going to do an epic night of some stand-up paddleboarding during sunset with some delicious food, and it's just going to be a fun way to kind of meet you guys, hang out. You don't have to do the stand-up paddleboarding if you don't want to. Uh, you can just kind of hang out with me and chat and just kind of... I don't know just have a good night so really excited there's details in the info box down below if you want to come be sure to RSVP to the event so we know how much food to bring and feel free to bring any friends uh, that you think will enjoy the event and I'm just so excited to meet you guys let's hop right into the video and let's get meal prepping okay so we're gonna start off with breakfast of course and for breakfast we are making my ultimate delicious breakfast cookies. Yes, you can eat cookies for breakfast and be healthy. So for this recipe, you're going to need to do like the wet and the dry ingredients separately. In a medium sized bowl, you're gonna go ahead and mash up a nice ripe banana, get that all mashed up really well. And then with that, you're gonna add in the remainder of your wet ingredients. We have some maple syrup, peanut butter, coconut oil, applesauce, couple eggs, vanilla. Give that all a really good whisk and then put it aside while we mix our dry. Now for the dry, you're just gonna mix together your oats, almond flour, oat flour, baking powder, soda, nutmeg, cinnamon, a little sea salt, and give it a good mix. And then basically we're gonna now combine the wet and the dry together. So you're gonna throw in the wet with the dry, fold it all in. You don't wanna over mix it, but you wanna make sure that all the, the flours and stuff are well mixed. And then for our fillings, you're gonna add in some shredded carrots and shredded apple along with some raisins. And to shred my apples and carrots, I actually just used a food processor. A lot of food processors actually have an attachment that you can use it for shredding and slicing, which is really convenient, especially when you're meal prepping. All right, so combined everything together really well, and then you're just gonna have a cookie sheet, line it with some parchment paper. Oh, and I forgot to say, but make sure the oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit before you start. So I'm just gonna take a ice cream scoop size worth of batter. It makes anywhere from like 12 to 15 cookies, depending on how large you make them. Throw them in the oven and bake for 25 minutes until they're nice and golden brown on top. Um, and your house is just gonna smell delicious. All right, this is dangerous. I have like a whole tray right in front of me. Oh my God. I would be such a happy student if I woke up to these cookies in the morning. Mmm. Okay, so while we have the oven heated, let's also make our next meal, which is a roasted red pepper and tomato soup. I'm actually doing a kind of a two-part thing for lunch. We're doing a sandwich as well. So for this soup, we're gonna need to do some roasting. So you're gonna, once again, get a, a tray of some sort, line it with some parchment paper for easy cleanup, and then you're gonna throw on some chopped up tomato on a vine, onions, red pepper, along with some basil, olive oil, lemon juice, and some sea salt and pepper. Give that a good mix with your hands, get right in there. And then I'm just, I just took like a whole bulb of garlic, I chopped off the top, and I'm just gonna throw that in the pan as well. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there. So throw that all into the oven. You're gonna have to do this at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and roast it anywhere from like 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how much time you have, but the longer, the better, trust me. Okay, so when it's almost done roasting, you can go ahead and take a really large pot and bring about four cups of water to a boil with some type of uh, chicken stock, I guess. I use those little like bouillon cubes. You can use the powder form. So bring that to a boil and then once your tomatoes and everything is done roasting, let it cool slightly and then transfer it over into the pot of water, making sure to kind of squeeze out all of the garlic 
like cloves from the bulb. Does that make sense? Because you don't want to actually have the skin in there. So just squeeze them all out and it's going to be like the creamiest garlic butter in your soup. It's the flavor is amazing. All right, to that, you're going to add in some extra spices. I have some chili flakes, turmeric, garam masala, and paprika. I'm gonna give it a quick stir for all the flavors to kind of come together. And now to blend it, there's two ways you can do it. You can use an immersion blender, which are the ones that you can just kind of throw right into the soup and blend. Those are really handy. I don't have one, my mom has one, and I didn't borrow it from her this time, so I just ladled it into my Vitamix blender, and it did the trick perfectly. So you just wanna do it probably in two batches, Otherwise, you're gonna like fill up your blender and it's gonna go all over the place. Uh, so do it in two batches, blend it all up, transfer it back into your soup pot, and then throw, go ahead and throw in some coconut milk to make it really creamy, give it a stir. I usually will bring it up to a boil just to kind of heat up the coconut milk, and you have delicious, creamy, roasted red pepper tomato soup, I forgot the name. Um, but it's so creamy and delicious, it's so satisfying. You guys are gonna love this for lunch. Okay, so for the second part of lunch, since we're doing like a soup and sandwich kind of combo, we're making a Caesar bagel. And this is something I used to order all the time from a local coffee shop near my high school, and I still crave it to this day. So it just reminds me of back to school. So for this, you're gonna need to make my homemade Caesar dressing, which if you haven't made it already, it's delicious. Here it is right here. I'll just make a batch of it, keep it in the fridge, and oh, it's so garlicky and Caesar -y. I love it. Honestly, this is like the best Caesar dressing I've ever had. So I'll have the recipe down below and I just got some on my finger. Mm. The longer it marinates, the better because all the flavors really enhance. Okay, so for the actual sandwich, super easy. You just want to cut a bagel in half, give it a quick toast, and then you can just layer on your ingredients. So I just sliced up some white cheddar, tomato, thinly sliced red onion, and then I have pickles, cucumber, Lots of shredded lettuce. You gotta shred the lettuce so it looks like, you know, that you're at a sandwich shop. And then go ahead and drizzle on your Caesar dressing. Don't be shy, because you really wanna give those veggies something to soak up. Um, and cut it in half, and there you have a delicious Caesar bagel that's full of veggies and just delicious. It feels like a Caesar salad in a bagel with cheese. Like, it, all it needs is bacon and, and I don't know, you have a, a Caesar salad? I, I have no idea. Okay, so for snack time, because I know you guys need snacks to get going through your day. Like when I'm getting really tired in class or when I used to get really tired in class, all that would keep me going is knowing that I'm like, I have a bar or some kind of snack in my bag um, because I find just eating wakes me up. Eating and drinking wakes me up and helps me not fall asleep in class. Um, so for snack this week, we have two snacks actually, since we're not doing dinner because you don't eat dinner at school, if you did, That'd be, I don't know, do, do people stay that late? I don't think so. Um, so I have some sliced up orange wedges, which are always an awesome thing to bring to school uh, because they're easy to like hold in class. Like you just can hold by the skin and eat them and not get too messy. And then because I have a sweet tooth, of course some chocolate. I mean, you can have chocolate that's healthy as well. So I have my little chewy caramel chocolate bites. So good, so easy to make. And you can be a chocolatier and have delicious, healthy chocolate, even in class. Um, so to do this, you're gonna need to make your date coconut caramel mixture that's gonna go in the filling. Okay, so for the date caramel filling, all you're gonna need is a food processor and you're gonna add in some soaked medjool dates. I just soaked them in some hot water for about 10 minutes with some peanut butter, coconut oil, vanilla extract, and give it a blend. You're gonna have to stop and scrape the edges in between until you get like this really thick, gooey, caramel consistency batter. I don't know, it's so good. I could just eat it with a spoon. Uh, but this is what it should look like. So once you got the right consistency, uh, go ahead and transfer this mixture into a small bowl. And then you're gonna go ahead and toss in your unsweetened shredded coconut. I didn't have shredded coconut, so I used flakes, but I mean, it's like the same thing. So just fold those in really well, cover it with plastic wrap and set it in the freezer for about 30 minutes just to harden a bit. Otherwise it's gonna be really sticky when you're trying to roll them and shape them. So throw those in the freezer. While those are freezing, we're gonna go ahead and make our chocolate coating. So to melt the chocolate, you're gonna do like a double boiler kind of setup. So you just have a small pot with some water on a low simmer, throw on a glass or metal bowl on top and then go ahead and melt in some chocolate. Now you wanna have good quality chocolate for this, otherwise you're not gonna get that like 
silky consistency. So either semi-sweet baker's chocolate or a nice like dark chocolate that you really like, uh, you're gonna go ahead and melt that in with a little bit of coconut oil and sea salt. And this is just gonna be the perfect topping for our little chocolate bars. Now the trick here is to keep stirring. You wanna keep the temperature on low to medium and really watch it because you don't want your chocolate to burn. So I just keep kind of keep stirring it. And then when I know it's almost melted, I pull it away from the heat. Now to make our chocolate bars, there are actually two ways you can do this. If you don't have a, a mold of some sort that you can use, then I'll have the instructions listed in the uh, recipe post down below um, that you can do by just like kind of uh, rolling the, the filling and then dipping them in chocolate but we're gonna go the extra mile because Chloe brought this really cool chocolate mold or like she uses it for like granola bars as well okay so I put about a tablespoon's worth of chocolate into each little square or rectangle and then I just kind of like I don't know, swirl it around so the chocolate kind of covers kind of coats up the edges a little bit throw this in the freezer only for about 10 minutes just to harden and at this point our caramel filling should be set so take them both out and you're just gonna take about a tablespoon's worth of the caramel filling and roll it into a little, um, like a Twinkie, like a little, little hot dog or Twinkie. I don't know what the shape would be. So you're gonna roll it and kind of shape it and then throw, go ahead and like place that into the molds on top of the chocolate. And then take your melted chocolate, top everything off, flatten, level off the tops. It's okay if it gets a little messy because once you pop them off, they look really pretty. Um, and then go ahead, put these back into the freezer for about 15 minutes just to set. And when you take them out, you have delicious, really cute homemade chocolate bars that look like really professional and delicious. And they have a gooey caramel center with coconut. So the coconut adds as like an extra fiber and sweetness and a crunch to the chocolate bars. They're just delicious. And you can add really like any filling you want. You can do crushed almonds or pecans, whatever you want, and they are so delicious. All right, that's gonna be it for our back to school meal prep. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys want some more awesome back to school recipes, be sure to come follow me on Pinterest because we did a back to school takeover. We did a back to school slider with like lunchbox staples, snacks, breakfast, supplies, all the things you need for back to school. It's over there on my Pinterest page. I will have a link down below. And if you guys want to vote for the next meal prep theme, be sure to vote in the top right hand corner. I will have some different options there. And that's how I choose the next meal prep videos. Thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget I post every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys. Good luck back to school. It's next week. I think for most people. Bye guys. <laughs>